Right, 26 October 2021, and today I'm joined by my usual guest, Dr. Fedias Mteneri. How are you, sir? Uh, Gamba, I'm very well. Uh, thanks for having me tonight, and a uh, very good evening to your viewers. Right, doctor, today we've got a quick discussion, a very complex topic that was raised this week by the ZANPF youths. The ZANPF youths are saying President Mnangagwa is doing a great job, such that he needs to be given more time to complete what he's doing, the good work that he's doing. So they are calling for the scrapping of the two term limits. So I would like to hear your thoughts on it very, very quickly. And then I'll ask you one or two questions before we close. Do you think President Mnangagwa deserves more than two terms? Uh, okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, Gambakwe, for that question. I should say, though it is a quick discussion we are going to have tonight, but it's quite a complex uh, issue uh, when we discuss uh, term limits uh, at state level. But I want to put it into context that uh, uh, with ZANU PF at the helm, and we are here discussing term limits, we have to interrogate that issue because it stems, it stems from ZANU-PF itself as a system. And uh, I want to just highlight some few things here that, look, uh, ever since independence, I think it is, we have been stuck with the issue of, uh, of term limits that President Robert Mugabe, in fact, we have never had a, a clear roadmap for term limits of the executive presidency in Zimbabwe, such that uh, we have only had now, up to now, two executive presidents since 1980. You would remember that uh, President Banana was a ceremonial one. Now, why is it so? We have to interrogate ZANU-PF itself as a system. Uh, you know, if you go to their constitution, it is silent on, on, on term limits of the president and first secretary of ZANU-PF. And um, if you'd like, ZANU-PF uh, uh, is, is, is modeled around the communist kind of socialist uh, structure of, of uh, you know, of the parties there, and particularly China, in which the first secretary who becomes the president does not have term limits. So as you can see, it is, in itself a culture of ZANU-PF that term li limits do not exist. Um, you know, and um, I want to actually say, besides that ZANU-PF uh, uh, doesn't have term limits, the movement for democratic change has also been plagued by the same, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, problem in that while in theory, the constitution of the MDC prescribed term limits on, uh, on, uh, on, on, on their president. In practice, we have not seen that because you'd remember since 1999 with their president, Morgan Changirai, we have not had another president. And why the current uh, uh, problems that are bedeviling the MDC are occurring, we must understand that they emanate from the issue of term limits, which bring rise to the issue of succession. Who comes in? But the state constitution now prescribes term limits. And as you rightly say, there are two term limits. Now, why, is, why are the youths in ZANU-PF calling uh, for the scrapping of the term limits? There are a few observations that one can make there. That uh, you understand that uh, in ZANU-PF, because it's their culture, that in their, in their constitution, there is no term limit, therefore, they are they are basically reverting back or or, or just uh, sliding back to who they are that they 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 know no term limits they, they they it's in their dna that the leader who is there becomes the leader but secondly and very much important the nature of zanu pf 
especially now after the coup of 2017, is such that there is a, a party and military complex there. Um, and what does it do? You'd realize that under President Mugabe, it was not very clear that uh, the military was the power behind the throne. So much so that whoever comes in to be the, the president does not wield that power, except that for President Mugabe, at a, the first two decades of his uh, leadership, I think he had that kind of uh, power which he could have used to turn things around. But as his age, as he aged, you realize that uh, he could not control the happenings, the alliances that were happening to a point where the military became more important and more powerful. So you will see that the president becomes a, a proxy, a proxy of the military itself. And therefore, he did not even have the power to, to say, I'm stepping down or term limits are over. I mean, my term limit is over. Now, that aspect, bring it after the coup, the coup actually brought the cat out of the bag. I mean, uh, uh, that President Mnangagwa, who had been fired from ZANU-PF, had to be called after the coup, after the military had uh, already set the stage for him to come. So basically, he comes in as the, a civilian uh, face, though, of course, we know he is a soldier himself. And therefore, he is... A, a, a face of of, of 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 the military. So, I want you to understand now where this background is important because when you hear the youth calling for the scrapping of term limits, now you have, you have come to the politics, the factional battles that are within ZANU PF itself, in which, of course, the youth league the women's league play a very, very important, a very important uh, role. If I'm sure you're going to show the video of when this was said. If you look at the youths there, they are basically having open mouths, shut minds. They are being politically hysterical, saying we don't want term limits, but they don't even know what that means. They don't know what that means, but you can tell that there is a force behind them that is telling them that this is the time to, 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 you know, to bring this to the fore. Uh, uh, and, 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 and that is an aspect you should look at. Forget about this whole thing that President Nangagwa is doing a, a good job, that he's doing this and that. It's, it's nothing there. And as we proceed, you shall see where this whole politics of scrapping of term limits is going. So. Now, you ask me a question, should he have more uh, 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 term limits? The question is, I mean, the answer is a, a, an emphatic no. The state constitution of 2013, which was voted for by more than 90% of the population, clearly stipulates that a president term limits I mean, are two is limited to two five-year uh, uh, terms, and 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 any such a, a change would be a coup on the constitution, which the people of Zimbabwe, which ZANU PF uh, uh, claims to represent, uh, it's, it's a coup on that. So it's it's a no and no, but the question is, can can, 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 can ZANU-PF withhold? Can they put brakes on the madness? The question is no. Right now they are in, 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 in top gear of their own factions. Today you saw what was happening with the war veterans and everything. And they are in that uh, mode in which they have to solve their own factional battles using you know, uh, uh, the state uh, constitution and saying all oh, this uh, 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 hullabaloo about changing the constitution. I think those are my, 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 my thoughts uh, from the beginning. Okay, Doc, I'm, 
reluctant to take a long time today. As I said, I want us to keep this very, very short. And I think okay. the points that you have made from the perspective of the Constitution, they are very, very clear. But I normally don't talk politics or legal. I talk politics. And today we are talking military, like you're saying. L let us go to the realities on the ground. Is a two-term limit suitable for Zimbabwe in, under the present circumstances? Gambogwe, again, you, you, you then, politics does not e exist in a vacuum because if it did, then we will have a, a, a very lawless society, a society in, in, in which we cannot govern the powerful. Um, the issue of term limits um, is, 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 is basically a democratic uh, aspect meant to, to curb the excesses of power. People have to learn to leave the stage even while the limelight is still on them. It's, a, it's, it's an aspect that we should, uh, uh, we should uh, embrace. And again, the moment one individual thinks that they are the alpha and omega or are ordained to be the life ruler of a, 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 a state like Zimbabwe, which has got such brilliant minds, it is, it is, it is a wrong idea. And the fact is that the legal part of our constitution recognizes that we are a democratic state which follows a, a, a term limits. And therefore, if you ask me, do I think it works for Zimbabwe, it definitely should work. It's unfortunate that we have not had the experience of, 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 that, uh, of that phenomenon. Uh, and uh, other countries have uh, experienced it. Zambia, it is on their, they are on their sixth, seventh president, term limits. Uh, uh, Malawi, ever since they also started uh, after the Kamuzu Banda era, term limits, they are moving. And uh, such countries tend to develop faster. Uh, look at South Africa, which has almost a similar history as us. Uh, they recognize term limits so much so that even within a, a single party, they can still change leaders. Now, I have a problem with ZANU-PF in that in as much as they may not want to, to, to recognize term limits within their party. They are exporting that uh, phenomenon to, to, to the state uh, uh, to the state level where we are supposed to be governed by a constitution. And therefore, it, 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 I mean, it's unacceptable. It's very unacceptable. Okay. I, I want to go to my second last question. And, and this question is to do with the leadership pipeline uh, or, or the succession in zanu -PF. Do we have people in zanu -PF who are obvious and clear leaders who can take over from President Mnangagwa? Who is, you can see that President Mnangagwa is, he has planned his ascendance to power. He, he did not just land that position. He is a an accomplished politician who knows how to balance forces across the country. Is there anyone right now who can take over in Zanupia and have that kind of overall and uh, of acting power over Zanupia? Gambakwe, uh, I respect your views, but sometimes you, I, I, you strike me as... Uh, I don't know, your comments about the current president, they are your own comments as to how you think that he's able to, to hold the center. But if you ask me, the center seems not to be holding. And uh, it is in the nature, probably, of the leadership. And, 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 and we know that. Can that, I answer uh, you there, Doc? Can, can I answer you before you, you proceed? No, 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 let me answer. Uh, you come through. You will come yes. through. I know you are burning. You are burning because I'm going to really say it as it is. That we have seen, anyway, while, while uh, the ZANU-PF politics 
ever since even the liberation struggle has tended to 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 circulate on uh, on ethnicity where do you come from it is very very clear it has bloomed now and it is a no brainer that the current setup with the current president and uh, by the way i am in karanga i come from the karanga and there is no doubt that there is the karangarization of 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 institutions and the state and 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 in that in so doing it sort of dims uh, the light on other able leaders one two zanu pf has in fact has had quite a lot of people who have got statecraft who have got, who have got an understanding of politics but i'm sure they they stick to this saying which says no sun can shine before the other one arises because of course there are dangers there you cannot especially in the type of politics within zanu pf you cannot show your ambition that you are a leader but they are great leaders look i was listening to to one young man who has uh, lodged a, a court case against the current president who is actually showing how unconstitutional uh, he, he he rose to power and i was looking at i was listening to his eloquence his sort of grasp of 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 issues and i was thinking where are these people in zanu pf and not speaking out but you know what we in our faces people like tafadzwa mugwadi are thrown to us a man bereft totally bereft of 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 uh, of of political science bereft of leadership bereft of anything that you can say is decorum of 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 a spokesperson of a re revolutionary party like zanu pf I, i i don't wish to listen to him because he doesn't inspire that sense of the revolutionary party he inspires violence you know when he opens his mouth i feel violence coming out of his uh, his mouth because he can't he can't speak sense now in zanu pf there is a whole lot of leaders there but look outside zanu pf the mdc has shown that it has literally a, a, a bred a new type of leadership which suits the modern day needs unlike the i mean i mean zanu pf which still wields leaders who 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 talk of the liberation struggle the liberation struggle is important to us but we cannot leave the liberation struggle 40 years down the line so i think if you ask me within zanu pf there is totally there is there are a lot of leaders there who can take this country further if they were given a chance okay doc i hear you and i, I want to take you back to your initial statement my comments on president mnangagwa and his abilities they come from proper analysis i am not doing this from my personal opinion uh, president mnangagwa is an extremely clever politician and this people who who are close to president mnangagwa will tell you he is not the he outsmarted mgabe and you, 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 that should sink Mugabe had the best engine of thinkers around him but they were all outsmarted by president Mnangagwa right under his nose and that is why i'm saying to you the new people that are there in Zanu PF let's let's get some detail who do you see as being capable of taking over from president Mnangagwa right now let's say after 2023 do you see give us some names <laughs> gambakwe okay you are driving me to an area which of course i'm i i will not be very interested in 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 making comments but i will try my best but firstly let me make a comment about what you said in terms of the rising of um, of of president munangagwa after president robert mugabe you must understand and in politics that is a strong leader like a, a, a strong man like president mugabe was as you age your faculties start to fail you um 
and 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 you must understand that those around him they are those who love him for his philosophy but they are what we call rent seekers people who are there for what they can benefit of of what they 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 perceive to be a benefit in future in terms of power and you must understand that um, it, it, towards the twilight of 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 his political career president mugabe had uh, had divided that party to a point that there were radicals who were supporting him and he had created a radical faction which was against him which made it easier for cross alliances to happen now look we had people who were politicians like jonathan moyo and we had novices in 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 the wife of the president who did not at all have a, a the knowledge of politics or or even the diplomacy and 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 and, and the skill to navigate the political terrain whose uh, a sharp town actually became her own downfall in fact they say she was she herself was uh, hoisted by her own petard that at that stage you cannot really a a a say uh, president munangagwa really uh, upstaged president mugabe it was just a matter of fate we saw it coming that was seen coming because president mugabe was basically helpless at that stage he didn't know who to trust and he didn't even know uh, those who were, those who were close to him whether they were genuine and so we can i cannot uh, sit here and 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 probably uh, give kudos to anybody for upstaging president mugabe it was his age but you ask me of names with him zanu pf remember zanu pf right now is a, a if you ask me is a divided party who's young young energetic and very thoughtful leadership is in exile or is is dormant today the likes of uh, jonathan moyo the likes of sevia kasukwere and, and and others are right in there the young promising but of course they've got their garbage there for which if they were to come to an election people would judge them for for for, for what they did or for, for for what they did not do and uh, and 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 there are many more young people within zanu pf and like i said who are overshadowed by um by 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 the liberation uh, you know stores who are in there who will never give them a chance and um, like i said zanu pf is not the kind of party that has known to be to nature its own talent to nature its own children for leadership they haven't been able to do that 40 years have told us that in fact if anything they have accused uh, uh, they are, they, have, uh, they i mean uh, they, that statement which said if 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 uh, if a, a cheetah or a lion wants to eat its own children it accuses them of smelling like gods that's what zanupiev does it accuses all of its upcoming and uh, and promising people the uh, youngsters of of everything and anything so that it can be able to dispose of them and therefore today unfortunately those zanu pf youngsters who are able and do not have the spine to come out they always come out as proxies of others and it's it's, it's unfortunate that therefore that zanu pf is the party of the past and there is a, a new party on the block of young people who are not scared to speak truth to the power to challenge power even in the face of dangers to their lives and uh, and 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 for me if you ask the mdc has shown to be that kind of alternative that brings in a new breath into our body politic and therefore you ask me about zanu pf i'm sure they can speak for themselves amongst their factions who they think is the next leader okay in my own opinion if president nangagwa was to live in 2023 and and doesn't contest zanu pf would disintegrate so because right now there is no one is who has the same capacity that is got 
so that we have to push it to 2028 to allow the young guys that you are speaking about to come up. Because remember this, he, he has created a system. That is what I always tell people. President Nangagwa can create a system compared to someone like Chamisa who cannot create a system. He, he is an individual. If Chamisa is not there, the MDC is not there. But if President Mnangagwa is not there, Zanupia functions. You should come here to South Africa and see how Zanupia functions. I'll go to the, to the grassroots and see how well, Zanupia functions. It's working like a system, like a world old machine. That's now, the difference. Gampakwe, I, I, I still have a problem. You you seem to suggest that ZANU PF is not disintegrating, and that if the uh, president, the current president, leaves the stage, it will disintegrate. ZANU PF started disintegrating. Actually, the major process of its disintegration started with the leaving of the stage of President Mugabe. Like I always tell you, there is a huge, a large constituency a homeless constituency of ZANU-PF, which is not in what we currently call ZANU-PF. Who do you think those people support? One, two, yes, you are very right that um, a, as a system, ZANU-PF has managed to, 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 to hold a semblance of, 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 of an old machine because of of, of, of its use of, of the state machinery, of which if it, uh, one of which is the military, of which if it was to be put aside, ZANU-PF would be like a, an owl, looking like it has horns, yet they are just, uh, it's just fair. And that is a correct view. Uh, uh, and Gambak, I want to tell you that when a, a, a party is in power, and it has it has shown so much brutality, so much uh, 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 you know that it can punish all those who goes against it. It it breeds rent seekers around it, people who 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 can feign support at any moment and and sing praises. We saw it at the moment when President Mugabe was about to go. Remember the, the, the star rally in Bulawayo, where everyone was, 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 was all for President Mugabe, saying President Mugabe, president for life. Even parliamentarians, no sooner had the coup started, did those people turn around and say, you know, we all wanted this man to go. So the disintegration of ZANU-PF started a long time ago, and it's in process. It's a matter of time. No wonder why our question today of should he have many terms. Unfortunately, if they if he goes through with that, he is likely to say to 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 to, to follow the same fate as President Mugabe, because because of that he has bred he has bred rent seeking people who only love him, like I said, for what they can gain, not for the sake that uh, they see that there is future in the party. So whatever one may say, ZANU-PF's history is going to, re to repeat, but the disintegration is in process and it's unstoppable as long as they reform. And what kind of reform is it? Let them put in place real democratic uh, 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 reforms. Make sure that they are young people, they are, they are visionaries, have an opportunity to get into leadership positions and, 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 and make clear reforms to show that they are, they are really uh, you know, nurturing new leaders of tomorrow. But as long as it stands as it is, you see that there are few strong men there who are eyeing the president's position and they will always use either the youth, the youth league, the women's league, these people who I always think they don't think before they talk, all they do is to support, ululate, and, and, and clap, and yet they are not forwarding any, any, any leadership philosophical view. That's my thinking on that. Okay, Doc, I think we, we have covered this 
this topic very, very nicely and we're on exactly 30 minutes. I would have wanted to, to look at other countries around us and also the example of China and Libya, very, very successful countries when they had one president who didn't change. What's your comment on that? And also then I want to take you to South Africa where the country has gotten worse with a new president, every new president that came. So Mandela was better than Mbeki. Mbeki was better than Zuma. Zuma is better than Ramaphosa. So let's look at the countries that were stable under one, one president or in China, which has said they moved away from this democracy. What is your okay. opinion? Is it going to work in Zimbabwe if we consider this? My opinion, listen, Gambako, it is always a danger and a time bomb, if you like, when you breed an individual as a, I mean, strong, strong leaders. What you need are strong institutions. Because, okay, let's say, let's say Gaddafi was not taken out by the Americans. Let's just say, because we know also that the problem was the intervention there. But if he had come to old age, what was going to become of Libya without institutions? Probably it would have slid into the same, same abyss that it finds itself in. You mentioned South Africa. I think what is in, happening in South Africa, that is the change you want. As you build a state, as you build strong institutions, that is the kind of robust kind of uh, uh, um, you know, activity you want. All those things that are happening are lessons for stronger institutions to withstand. And once those institutions are now strong, there won't be need for strong men. So the, the countries that are trying it with new leaders, these are models because what they are doing is they are moving away from the culture of strong men to a culture of strong institutions because institutions by their very nature, they, they support the state, they support the constitution, they stand by the, by the, the founding values of a state. Unlike, unlike strong men, Strong men do exactly what is happening in Zimbabwe, in which young men from Norway are asked to come and politicize an issue of term limits and try to throw it in our faces, yet it is made to serve particular leaders of particular, in, in a particular time uh, era, so to speak. So, Gambakwe, the debate on whether to stick with strong men or strong institutions, it's a, a done debate. Strong men do not work. Strong institutions work. I think that's my response to you on that. Okay, I want to press you a little bit on China. I do not think the, the Chinese president and the leadership structure is based on a strong man. I think the Chinese Communist Party is a system that, that's I, I, I keep to trying to push you back to the system. President Nangaba does not use force. If you see what he does now, he does not use force. And the Chinese, they do not use force in what they're doing. They have a system. Everything of theirs operates as a system. Don't you think what we need in Zimbabwe is not a president, but a system? which is what these young guys are calling for, a, a delay. Gambakwe. Wait, Gambakwe. I think your analysis on China and by extension Zimbabwe is, is, is totally wrong. Let me educate you a little bit about China, in which you say a system. China is an opaque system. It's an opaque state in which they show you what you want to see. They show you Shanghai. They show you Beijing. They show you that uh, they are mighty in terms of, 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 of the military. China is the worst dictatorship that you have ever seen. In fact, the majority of Chinese live in poverty, if you didn't know. 
The majority of Chi the Chinese people would rather leave China, but even elsewhere where they work, elsewhere, did you know that they are working for the Chinese government? They cannot make decisions for themselves. The communist kind of uh, um, uh, philosophy that they follow is such that it controls even the way you go to the toilet. Those people are not free. And so what you see definitely is a, a dictatorial system that has stood the test of time ever since Chiang Kai-shek, Mao Zedong, and they have strengthened that grip on power. And Zimbabwe really copies from that. So I want your viewers to know that China does, does use force. China is a very, very dictatorial state. China, in fact, 80% of Chinese, most of whom are either rice farmers, the, the, the squalor conditions they live in, the kind of, 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 of laws, of, of curfews, that they live under, which you will never know. That's why China, China never uh, prides in showing off whatever is within the deep Chinese state. They show you what the Americans want to see, the, 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 the very beautiful spaces. So indeed, it is not the best system that, to, that, that, that a country can have. Uh, and and, and, and uh, your question on whether the Zimbabwe government doesn't use force or not, I think I will not drag myself into that debate. Uh, uh, Senator Pugeni, you had a very good uh, discussion with Senator Pugeni, and I want to borrow from his statement. In fact, you had he, uh, in as much as I don't agree with some of his uh, views, but you had quite some, some some very incisive discussions there. He said actually that I won't be dragged into a a, a, a mud fight uh, with a pig because you will lose. The debate about whether <laughs> whether ZANU PF <laughs> uh, whether ZANU PF uses force brutality and uh, and you want to to drag me into that debate, I'm not willing to get into that debate. But safe to say that China China is a very dictatorial state. In fact, one of the worst dictator dictatorships you you will ever see, except that it is at the top of world power hierarchy, and that America sometimes is not able to, 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 to challenge some of the, 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 their actions which are totally inhumane and which are totally unacceptable. I think let me leave it there. Okay, Doc, uh, I think I hear you, but there is a problem in the way that we Africans think. We don't think as a group, we think as individuals. The Chinese, they think as a group. When they do their strategy, they don't think short term, they think long term. That's why Chinese are on top in the financial services sector, telecommunication sector, construction, mining, everything that you can think of, resources. The Chinese, they, they have spread their tentacles all over the world and they are extracting. It's a system. And I, I think that is where we lack as Africans. We do not have system thinking. We do not think in a way of how do, I, do we continue after the other one is gone. <laughs> and I, I, I think that is the, the that is what I, think, I, I, I admire in, in President Nangawa's way of doing things right now. No, well, well I think uh, 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 Gambabwe, that is a discussion I think I would want us to have on another day because the way you are putting it as well is, is, is such that um, I don't agree totally. Well, when you talk of system thinking versus democracy, already you are, you, we are diverging there. A democratic state which we claim to be, which our constitution, because the founding, uh, uh, one of the founding principles of our constitution is based on the Bill of Rights. And the Bill of Rights places squarely rights on individuals. And when you want to bring me to a system way of thinking, and you think that China, such an authoritarian system is a better system, I totally don't agree. But like I said, 
if we are to talk about China and look at what lessons Zimbabwe can learn, if there are any, that's a debate for another day. But I want to uh, unequivocally say that the Chinese system is a dictatorial, authoritarian, fascist state which does not respect the human rights of individuals. And the extraction that you see they are doing all over the world is for survival. It's for survival because you remember in the 60s, they underwent a very dangerous uh, 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 you know, you know, pop, uh, population policy in which they wanted to build a strong army. That's why they came to have such a huge population. And then it becomes a war for resources. No wonder why even when they come to Africa, they don't question leaders. They don't question leaders on democracy. They enter into very opaque deals. And, and that is not something we should emulate. We are a, an avowed democratic state and those are the values we cherish and we want to achieve. And therefore I don't agree with your approach to a, whatever you call a system approach, which on another day probably we will unpack and and and, and say see where it takes us. Okay, I, I apologize, uh, Doctor. I wanted to play the video of the youths uh, saying why they want President Nangagwa to go on for for as long as possible, but it's got so many echoes. So I'm going to play it. Let's play it as we go out. And, and I apologize. The, the sound there was very quiet. They were uh, very bad. They were in a hall, so it wasn't very clear. Is there anything else you want to say before we close? No, all I want to say is that I wish um, uh, sanity can prevail, even within ZANU-PF, uh, uh, that we are a democratic state. Let's not uh, make laws to suit leaders, but let's make laws looking into posterity. These young people would be judged by history as those who, 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 who actually curtailed the development that Zimbabwe was supposed to get ever since we got our 2013 constitution, a constitution which is supposed to be implemented, to be aligned to the laws. Uh, we are already mutilating it. We are already uh, 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 I mean, showing a, a client, clientele kind of uh, 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 approach to our leaders. We, we, we sing praises to strong men instead of, 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 of looking at the benefits that the general Zimbabweans, the ordinary Zimbabweans will benefit if we implement our constitution and create a democratic society in which everyone benefits, in which everyone partakes in, a, in, in, in the cake that we are going to make as Zimbabwe. So I hope sanity will prevail and then abandon these uh, senseless uh, ideas these uh, uh, wild and uh, unthoughtful uh, uh, mantras simply on the basis that we want to please a current leader in power and, and, and fight another faction. And let's build our society. Let's, let's, let, let's create a truly democratic society in which young people can benefit also in their lifetime. Otherwise, that's, those are the only words that I want to patch uh, uh, with uh, Gambakwe. And thank you very much for having me tonight. Thank you very much, Doctor. It's very important that the constitution, the current constitution of the country is amended so that it can allow a leader to have more than two terms. <laughs> the reason is that we realize that development does not have a term limit. Development requires someone to continuously have more time so that you can still need to have more uh, good things that happen in this department. We have seen accelerated development in all the facets under the steward in Sadatia's leadership of His Excellency. That is through the issue of road infrastructure, establishment of innovation hubs, establishment of institutions that empower uh, young people. We are also elated by the fact that he has also set up some viable economic activities for the young people, which include the issue of land, the issue of the nature projects, but also the issue of participation of young people in the uh, political discourse of this nation.
Come back with all the common. Oh, Sasani, come back with Anukayama. 